we will finish up the packet today, and we only have one thing remaining, and that's oxidation reduction. And some of you may have some friends in AP Chem, and we're actually doing some stuff like this, but it's a little more involved than what you guys are doing. Uh, this is what I call simple oxidation reduction. And what I mean by simple is you don't have to do all the things that we're doing in AP Chem. But again, it's giving you a good, a good groundwork of what's happening. Uh, when we talk about oxidation and reduction, we're talking about an exchange of electrons. Now, with all the single replacement reactions, we've actually been doing an oxidation reaction, reaction, oxidation reduction type reaction. You just didn't know it, all right? Um, and when we look at these, and when we talk about the term oxidation, I have a statement. Uh, there it is. Leo says Gur. When we talk about Leo says Gur. If something is losing electrons, it's being oxidized or there's oxidation taking place. If we're gaining electrons, then you actually have reduction taking place. Okay? So that's probably one of the easiest things to remember. Let me go back so you guys can get some blanks here. Are there any blanks? Okay. And I'm actually going to do something like this demo here, except I'm going to do the opposite. I'm not going to use the silver nitrate, I'm going to, I've got some copper sulfate brewing here, and I've got some iron nails. And I'm actually going to do a single replacement reaction or a oxidation reaction as well. Okay. And what's happening here from, let's think about what we did last night in the homework. We have a piece of copper metal. How do you represent a piece of copper metal in a balanced equation? Cu, good, just copper, Cu. And we're placing this in the silver nitrate. So you've got Cu plus AgNO3. Will this reaction take place? Yes. Yeah, okay, you can actually see that something's going on. The solution goes from a clear to a blue solution, okay? And the reason why this is blue is because of the copper ions. And what's happening is the copper from the metal is actually going into solution, changing from a metal to an ion. And we haven't talked about aqueous yet. Now's the time we're going to do it. So when we talk about a copper atom that's actually surrounded by water molecules, that's what we have here. It's an, it's an ion. It's a charged particle. And so when we look at some of the metals, they actually make the solution blue. Uh, yesterday we were looking, or the last time we met, we were looking at nickel ions. What color was that? Green. Remember the green liquid that I had that everybody said, oh, it looks like mouthwash. Not wash your mouth out with that. So some metals have different colors when they're in solution. What are the color? What's the color of the silver ions? Transparent. It doesn't give a color off. All right. And a lot of metals also do the same thing by making it clear as well. Okay. So what's actually happening is the silver is coming out of solution and actually starting to form. So we actually have. Well, I don't have any. But there's actually pure silver that's being formed on the outside, okay? which is kind of nice. So we're pulling the silver ions What's out of actually happening is, and here's the equation not showing the nitrate present. We have the copper that's a solid, and then we have the silver ions in solution. This is before they actually have a chance to interact with each other. The silver is coming out of solution, and whenever we're looking at silver by itself, okay, has no charge when it's a solid. Copper is actually going from the solid to a charged particle. Now, how many electrons does the copper have here? Oh, Let me ask you this. How many protons does copper have? Cu, copper, near the middle, top row. Exactly. How many protons does copper have? 29. So if it has no charge, how many electrons does it have? 29. Very good. So we didn't forget everything from first semester. So if copper goes from no charge to a plus 2 charge, did copper gain or lose electrons? It lost electrons because it became more positive. So if it lost or it has a plus 2 charge, how many electrons did it lose? 2. Very good. 
All right, so copper now has 29 electrons here. Now it has 27. So is copper being oxidized or reduced? And think about Leo says Gur. It's being oxidized. If you lose electrons, okay, become more positive, then you're oxidized. Where the silver has a plus one charge, and silver has, just to save you guys from looking, when silver is neutral, it has 47 electrons because it has 47 protons. How many electrons does silver have here? 46. Very good. If it were negative, then it would have more. So it has 46 here, and it gains an electron over here. Now, we obviously don't have these balanced out because the number of electrons that copper loses, all of the silvers are going to collect those. So if I have a plus two charge and a plus one charge here, I'm guessing that we're going to need two silvers to balance this out. Pretty cool. Okay. And we're going to do something like that here in a moment. So that gets us to what's called half reactions. And if you were a betting guy or girl, how many half reactions would you guess are in each equation? Two. Two. Very good. So two halves make a whole. So you can never have more than two half reactions. And one of those half reactions will be an oxidation, while the other half reaction will be a reduction. It'll be the opposite. Okay. So in this case here, the copper metal is losing electrons, therefore it's oxidized. And here, the silver is gaining an electron, therefore it's reduced. And we'll get to do some of those. And then I have a, a wonderful graph. And don't ever forget this, Leo says Gur. That'll bail you out of a lot of situations. We'll use that in AP as well. Then we'll do an example here. So I just want you to get the, the blanks here for the net equation for the redox reaction here. Did everybody get the blank so far? Yeah. Good, good answer. And so that's just showing what we're going to do on the board here. Oh, reducing agents, oxidizing agents. We're not going to talk about it, but definitely get those blanks. Excuse me. So reducing agent, oxidizing agent. We'll definitely talk about that next year. There's a practice. I'm going to turn the lights on to work these out. Yeah. Oh. oh, oxidation numbers. Let's get those. Sorry. <coughs> Blanks. Yeah. All right. Almost forgot about oxidation numbers. You kind of need to know oxidation numbers. Before we do any of the example problems up on the board here, I want to show a demo here. Now listen, listen. I want to show a demo, and what I have is a... So I have an iron nail. How do you represent iron? Wow, there you go. All right. So we have Fe, and the blue in the beaker is copper sulfur. So how do I represent that? Cu dust. So let's put the charge. So what's the charge on the copper here? Plus 2. And sulfate? Negative 2. Okay. Um, and then, let's go ahead and ask yourself, will the iron replace the copper? I believe not. Believe not? I believe not. Okay. Well, this would be a really crappy demo if it didn't. Well, what, I don't know what else to expect. No, no, no. We don't care about sulfate. What is iron trying to replace? Yeah. Will iron replace copper? Yes. So on the other side, we're going to have this and solid copper. So I'll go ahead and place this, what appears to be a silverish iron nail, and that's actually the color of iron. I think we're conditioned to think about iron as being rusted. Okay. So what's happening in the solution right now is that the iron is actually dissolving in the solution. Okay, and I'm not doing anything to it. I'm not heating it up. I'm not throwing any special things in there. But under the normal process here of oxidation reduction,
the iron is replacing the copper in the solution. The solution will change from that, that beautiful blue, what is that, turquoise color-ish, into dungy black color. It'll get really ugly looking. Okay, and so on the other side, the iron is going in the solution, so I'm actually dissolving part of the nail, dissolving, actually dissociating part of that nail, and then I'm going to get pure copper. So when I take this out, and it's only been in there for about a minute or so, but for those of you up front, I actually have the nail is copper plated. Okay, because what I'm doing is I'm pulling the copper out of solution. So for those of you out there, and if I leave it in there, more of the copper ions are coming out of solution. I'm making pure copper. So are we good here? What's the charge on iron? Two or three. We can, I think it's safe to say that this is a plus two charge. Okay, so it's balanced as written. Now, when we do our, that's our single replacement portion of the reaction. Here are our half reactions. So if I look at iron, iron has what charge right here? Plus two. Okay. What's the charge on iron as it stands all by itself? No charge. Very good. In other words, again, when you're by yourself, you should not be excited or charged, right? Why? It's only when you get with somebody else that you should be excited or charged. So you'd rather it's just... It's a good rule to live by, right? Yeah. Okay. So alone... So loners are doomed to be depressed. Pretty much. So it goes from no charge to a plus two charge. So what did the iron do? Did it gain or lose electrons to become more positive? Lost. Very good. And it actually, it lost how many electrons? Two. Two electrons. Good. Now, here's an easy way to remember this. Electrons have what charge? Negative. Negative. This has a positive charge. How many negative charges do we have? Two. Two. Plus positive two equals zero. So we always want to make sure the charges are the same on both sides. So when we add those charges up. Now, what I'm, I didn't do or I have a bad habit of not doing is writing a one there when I put the negative. Okay, so that's our first half reaction. Our second half reaction, and you'll notice that I leave the sulfate out because it doesn't change. So in a redox equation, we don't put things in that don't change. So over here we have copper with a plus two charge. Going to copper with what charge? What's the charge on the copper? Twelve. Zero. Good. Okay. So did copper plus two gain electrons or lose electrons to become? Gain. Gain how many? Two. Two. Okay. Now, one of these has to lose electrons while the other has to gain the electrons. Okay. Remember that. We can't have two half reactions where they're both gaining or two half reactions where they're both losing. So the iron, the with no charges being what? Oxidized or reduced? Oxidized. Oxidized. And the copper plus two is? Reduced. Very good. Okay. Let's look at the first practice problem. It says, bounce the following equation for a redox reaction where we have lithium. And lead plus two, and you'll notice that I did not include the non-metal in that. That's okay. Goes to lithium plus one and lead with no charge. Okay, so that's the reaction. What I want you to do is write the two half reactions. Okay. And then we'll balance this. You'll like this. I didn't do this on the last one because it was already balanced. So what do you want to start with, the lithium or the lead? And it doesn't matter. Lithium. Lithium, okay. So lithium goes to lithium plus one. So what's the charge on the lithium here? Zero. zero. And if you want to put a little zero there just to make yourself happy, that's fine. So did lithium gain or lose electrons to become more positive? It lost. And how many did it lose? One. Okay. So are charges balanced there? Yes. Good. Okay. On the other side, the other half reaction, we have lead plus two going to lead with no charge. What happened there? Mm. 
gained electrons. How many did it gain? Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. So it gained two electrons. Now, in your very short career as a chemistry student, how many balanced equations have you seen electrons in? Zero. Very good. How many are you going to start seeing? Zero. Very good. So we never show electrons in a balanced equation. So if we have two in this half reaction and we have one in this half reaction, somehow, some way, we have to balance the number of electrons. What would be a good way of doing that? Multiplying the top by two. Very good. So we always, whenever we work out a redox equation, we always want to balance e the electrons. So if I have one in the top reaction and two in the bottom, I need to multiply the top by two. Now I have two on the left side, two on the right. They cancel out. Okay. Anytime you have a like terms on both sides, just like in math, you can cancel those out. Treat the arrow like an equal sign. Okay. So now when we finish to do that, we'll have two lithium with no charge plus a lead with a plus two charge forms two lithium with a plus one charge and a lead with no charge. Make sure we have the same number of atoms on both sides and the same charges. So in other words, if I look at, say, the left side, lithium has what charge? On the left. One. Zero. No Zero. charge. No charge. That's one. And lead over here has a plus two. So all the charges on the left-hand side is plus two. What's the charge on lithium on the right-hand side? Plus one, but how many lithiums do we have? So what's the total charge there? Plus two. Charges are balanced, atoms are balanced. We're good. So this is our balanced redox equation. Okay. And you know what's crazy? It's the same thing that we've been doing if I would have said, okay, well, if I had lithium plus lead nitrate, oops, put a three in there, okay, making lithium nitrate, and lead, well, we have two nitrates, we need two. Now I have two lithium, I have two. The only thing I'm not including in these half reactions is the nonmetal or the thing that's not changing. Okay. So really, this is what you've been doing. You just didn't realize it. So 2A says balance the following equation for a redox reaction. So we have chromium plus three and zinc forming chromium no charge and zinc plus two. Okay. What do you want to start with? Chromium plus three? Okay, that's fine. And again, it doesn't matter. So if you wanted to start with zinc, that's all right. All right, so chromium plus three going to chromium no charge. Did it gain or lose electrons? Gain. gain. Very good. In other words, and it, it's not a negative, but the chromium plus three is becoming more negative by going to a no charge. Right? It's kind of a weird way to think about it, but if I'm plus three and I go to zero, that means I'm becoming more negative. So the redox equation, I'm sorry, the reduction equation will always make the thing more negative, even though it's not negative. Okay. And so the other one, hopefully you're finding out that, okay, whoops. if one thing is reduced, the other has to be oxidized. So how many electrons did the zinc lose to go from no charge to a plus two charge? Two. Two electrons, very good. Okay. Now, do I have the same number of electrons on both sides? No way. That wouldn't make it that simple. So what do we need to do to get the same number of electrons? There you go. Multiply the top by two and the bottom by three. Okay. Again, you will never have electrons in your overall balanced equation. This year, next year, ever. Okay? What if we do? Then you're wrong. What if it comes up? It won't. What if they change it? They? You mean you? No. What if science changes? 
Science won't change. Science will change. It won't budge. Science will change. Isn't science always changing? No, technology is changing. <laughs> technology is changing. Science, science is the same. Priority. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now we're going to multiply everybody and bring them down. And so we have two chromiums, no charge. And three zinc with a plus two. And honestly, this is as ugly as it gets for redox. So let's make sure we're balancing charges. So we have chromium with a plus three. How many do we have? Two of those. So the total charge is plus six. Good. And then on the right side, we have zinc with a plus two. And we have three of those. So plus six. Two chromium, two chromium, three zinc, three zinc. We're sitting pretty. Uh, it says, write a balanced equation for the reduction of iron-3 ions to iron uh, by the oxidation of nickel atoms to nickel-2 <laughs> ions. Well, probably what we want to do is write the two half reactions. Don't worry about putting them together. So we have iron-3. How would I represent iron-3? Fe plus 3. Fe plus 3, good. And it says that it's going to just iron atoms, that. All right. Well, let's do that one first before we go any further. What would, you, what would we need to do there? We need three electrons somewhere. Three electrons on there. Good. We'll put three electrons over here. So is the iron plus three being oxidized or reduced? Oxidized. Reduced. Very good. <laughs> and then the nickel... Is going to a nickel plus two. So it looks like we need two electrons on the right side. Okay. So do we have the same number of electrons on both sides? Of course not. That'd be silly talk. So two there, three there. Cancel out the electrons. Okay. And then we have two. Iron plus threes, plus three nickels, and then two Fe no charge, plus three nickel, plus two. Did you get this? It's not bad. And who's oxidized here? Nickel, very good. It loses electrons. And who's reduced here? Here. Who's reduced? Who's reduced? Iron plus three. No, plus three. Iron's over here. I'll take it. No, iron's right here. Iron plus three. I'll take it. All right. Um, I think we're done with that. You're not going to see any, like, C and D. Let's talk about oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers. Remember on your periodic table, are they blue on yours as well? Yeah. Okay. The little blue numbers up here are the oxidation numbers. Or potential charge that an element may have when it's with another element. All right. Again, when something's all by itself or with its own kind, so like if I had a bunch of iron atoms and they're with other iron atoms, they should not have a charge or should not be excited. Okay. However, when iron gets with another non-metal, then it should demonstrate or exhibit one of those charges. So what we're doing today is we're actually taking a look at and determining these little blue numbers. Now, the reason why that's different, remember what I said, okay, you're looking at something in group 7A. If it's a non-metal, what charge will it have? Negative one. That is still true when it's the only non-metal. Now, when we look at something like sulfate, phosphate, nitrate, iodate, or polyatomics, they're with oxygen, two non-metals coming together. So now, any of these charges are an option when this non-metal is with another non-metal. Okay? When it's the only non-metal present, we're still using our negative one, negative two, negative three charge. That's never going to change. However, like with nitrate, we have NO3 with the negative 3 charge. So what we're going to do today is we're going to find out which of these charges does nitrogen have 
when it's in the nitrate ion. Okay. So have your periodic tables out. And also, we still want to be able to access the charges for our metals that have more than one charge. Okay. So I have the formula, Na3PO4. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the charge on each of those atoms. Here's a great way of doing it. Okay. And I know there's more than one way of doing it, but this is how I show everybody. Okay. We're going to have sodium, phosphorus, and oxygen. Just line them up. Okay. How many sodium atoms are in sodium phosphate? Three. Three. Okay. How many phosphorus atoms are in sodium phosphate? One. One. How many oxygen atoms are in sodium phosphate? Four. Four. Good. Okay. What is the total charge on this compound? Zero. Very good. In other words, there is no charge listed here. If I were looking at, say, phosphate all by itself, the charge on phosphate is? I get a three. But when I add three sodiums to it, that charge goes away. It's balanced. It's zero. Okay? So when I ask you what is the charge on the compound, most of the time it will be zero. Okay? Most of the time? Most of the time. I might throw a polyatomic at you and just say, okay, what's the charge on each thing? Looking at your periodic table, the charge for oxygen is always negative two. Okay. And since we have four oxygens with a negative two charge, all the oxygens exhibit what charge? Negative eight. Very good. So all the oxygens together bring a negative eight charge. Looking on your periodic table, the charge on sodium is always one. plus one. How many sodiums do we have? So three times the plus one is three. three. All right. Now, here's the best thing. Always work with what you know. Okay? Oh my gosh. So if we know that everything in group 1A is a plus one charge, everything in group 2A is a plus two charge, and then our non-metals, okay, especially oxygen, okay, oxygen will always be negative two, and in a lot of cases, you'll see oxygen in this. What I need to do is make sure that these add up to equal zero. So what is my missing value here that will give me a value of zero? Plus five. Plus five. Okay. So what I need is a value here times one to give me plus five. Five. These are my oxidation numbers. Now, what I want you to do with your periodic table is check. Does phosphorus have a chance of being a plus five charge? Yes. Absolutely. So when you do this, you have to check and see, ooh, the value that I got is it on the periodic table? If it's not one of those blue numbers, you screw it up. <laughs> Period. Okay. Let's do copper sulfate. That's a good one. Okay. So again, copper, sulfur, oxygen. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Uh, let's actually do this. How many coppers do we have? One. one. How many sulfur? How many oxygen? Four. Okay. And when all of these charges are put together, it has a total charge of zero. Good. What's the charge on oxygen? Always go to the go-to guy. You know oxygen is always going to be negative two. Okay. So that gives me a negative eight charge. All right. Now we've hit a wall. Copper can either be plus one or plus two. Sulfur can be minus two plus four plus one plus six. Plus six. Okay. So there's these guys have more than one charge. How in the world are we going to be able to figure out the charge for one of these so we can find the other? Well, you know your ten polyatomics, right? So we're going to let the non-metal tell us what the charge on the metal is, and this is exactly what you do. So what's the charge on sulfate? SO4. Negative two. How many sulfates do we have? One. Good. Very good. So we have one sulfate. How many coppers do we have? One. one. So what must the charge on copper be? Two. Plus two. That is how you find out the charge on a metal if it has more than one charge. You let the non-metal tell you what the charge on the metal is. Now it gets really easy. So what number goes here? plus six, 
And what number times one gives me a plus six? Plus six. Okay. So again, here are my oxidation numbers. So copper has a plus two, sulfur a plus six, and oxygen a minus two. Now, if I had that equation, what's the charge on sulfur? Negative two. Very good. So when it's the only nonmetal, that's where we go back to our negative one, negative two, negative three. But when it's a poly, we got to find out what it is. Okay. And some phosphate. Okay. So again, probably the easiest way about going about this. Write down what you got. Nickel, phosphorus, and oxygen. How many nickels do we have? Three. Three. How many phosphorus? Two. Good. Oh, got a two there, not a one. How many oxygen? Eight. And when I add all these together, we get a charge of zero. Um, so oxygen has a charge of, that makes life very easy when oxygen's in there. All right, what's the charge on nickel? Could be two or three, right? So how are we going to find out? We're going to let our nonmetal tell us. So the charge on phosphate is negative three. How many do we have? Two, and all that equals zero. How many nickels do we have? Three. Three. So what must the charge on nickel be? Two. Plus two. Okay. That's why I've been showing you that since last semester. So you can do it now. So what number goes here? Plus ten. And ten divided by two is five. Okay. Piece of cake, all right? So if you hit the wall and you're like, oh, let your non-metal tell you what the charge on your metal is. Try the next one, AgiO3, on your, I'll tell you that silver only has a single charge, which kind of makes it boring. charge on silver. Plus one. It only has one charge. So how do I find iodine? Or I'm sorry, iodine. Okay. There's got to be a hard one here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the next one. There we go. So what's the charge on CO3? Negative two. We have three of those. How many chromiums do we have? One. One. So it has to be a plus six, right? Plus six. And what must all the carbons be? Plus twelve. Plus twelve. Twelve divided by three? Four. Plus four. Is that an option? Yes. So again, use that to check yourself. 